Blake Nestle. Let me start by once again stating how impressed I am with both the quality and volume of your work. It is truly an inspiration. Now on to my question. In my adulthood, I've tempered the ideological zeal that defined my teen and 20s years and become what I believe to be a run-of-the-mill moderate. My thoughts on contentious issues tend to fall evenly on both sides of the tribal divide, erring on the side of individual liberty over collective safety. I believe the expression is I want log cabin homosexual couples to be able to protect their cannabis plants with registered firearms. As an American with 2020 approaching, I consider our nation's political trajectory. I do not like the orange man, but I do not ha hate him either. I look to the viable alternative options as a person supportive of individual liberty with great disappointment. Save for candidates the American left would seemingly never rally behind in spite of being completely congruent with their ideology, Gabbard Yang, I have heard each of these people, some of whom sadly enough were once members of our justice system, talk exuberantly about violating the constitutional right to own firearms. I'll disclose some personal details in hopes of revealing my bias without being boring. I grew up with a father who taught me and my sister to shoot. I learned invaluable lessons about the cycle of nature and that being charitable didn't just feel good, but that it did good as well. Those lessons still inform my decision today as a man who believes we humans are custodians of this earth, and seeing as it has been so good to us, we have a duty to be good to it. As an adult, I've lived in Oakland, Los Angeles, and San Diego, and seen firsthand the dearth of crime that occurs and how desperately needed self-defense is. My sister may be nearly six feet tall and capable of handling herself, however, I can be intellectually honest in saying that against a man of comparable or greater size, she would have a real issue in defending herself. How can I in good conscience vote for a person who would actively work towards making self-defense for such a person more difficult? Moreover, the logic behind further gun ownership regulation just isn't there. If guns were the X factor in violent crime, then the country with the most guns would have the greatest violent crime rate. If guns were the X factor in suicides, then the country with the greatest gun ownership would also have the greatest suicide rate. Neither of the former is true, and the legislation that's being proposed seems to be aimed at a type of firearm used in a statistically minute amount of the crime they aim to prevent. All in all, this doesn't look like the state providing for the general welfare. It looks like a power grab under the guise of compassion. Thoughts? Okay, Blake, uh, this is a really, really big topic. I have actually done entire podcasts talking about this topic, and my views over time have changed as well. And this is one of the things that I'll just kind of plug about critical thinking is that it gives you the freedom to change your mind and not have to stay stuck in one position as you consider or reconsider different people's points of view and different information that you get from history or from law or, or sociology or wherever that's going to inform your decision-making process. So I hope that I won't be viewed as some big hypocrite because I say one thing one time and say something another time. I'll be viewed as a hypocrite anyway, but it's it's all in good fun. Um, okay, so I'm going to make this short. I'm going to get right to the point on this because it is a big topic, and I get your point. If and it, and you, as you said at the beginning of your question, you have defined your bias as being more towards uh, individual liberty than you know than against social good uh, or social welfare. I think you said. Um, so. Um, I'm going to say that I tend to bias maybe in the direction of social good more so than individual liberty. I'm willing to put curbs or regulations on individual liberty for the greater good. I think all of us are. It's really just a matter of where do we draw the line in the sand as to what is and isn't acceptable for us as individuals. And we all have different takes and ideas about this. All of us do, right? So we end up having to go with, well, what does the collective say? Because we really, you know, because some of our individual ideas and decisions are so radically different that there's no middle ground that we can comfortably find. And so we have to go with the, with the common vote, which itself tells us that we're willing to cede certain individual rights for, again, the common good. And on that note, what I'll say here is that what I would like to see put forward in terms of, um, 
you know, I'm just, I'm going to go right to the solution. Now, there's a lot of background to why I think this, um, including the fact that the Second Amendment does exist, and I'm not particularly pushing to repeal it or take it away or cancel it. That's not my position at this time. So, um, and it has been in the past. I have seriously considered whether the Second Amendment is something we really should have. And I know uh, and could make probably some decent arguments as to why we should get rid of it. But I also know that pragmatically or practically speaking, that is ridiculous. That's never going to happen in the United States, certainly not within my lifetime. So, um, you know, barring some other cataclysmic event involving guns and mass shootings are not cataclysmic events anymore at this point. You know, we're, we're just so used to them and they're so routine that they just kind of, we, we just don't really care as a country about that versus our Second Amendment rights. That much has been made clear. So we're not getting rid of the Second Amendment, and I'm not saying we should, nor am I saying that people should, um, that we should do um, mandatory gun buybacks in the United States. I would actually like to see something like that, but I know that's also just not a reality, both ideologically and, and in terms of uh, our Constitution. So we're not going to do that. So is there anything we can do to make things safer? Because, it, you know, when a mass shooting happens and people are outraged and children have died and things are at their emotional, you know, worst, um, people want something to be done. They don't want to continue to see mass shootings happen. And it is a uniquely American phenomenon. It does not happen in other countries anywhere near the rate that it happens in the United States. So say what you will about how we are statistically in a safer place in the United States than other countries, and that's true. And violent crime is down worldwide, not just in the United States. Um, you know, the guns are not helping or hurting one way or the other on that, right? So I'm so it's not on that basis that I'm making the argument, not on a statistical basis, that perhaps we should, you know, invoke some more controls or regulations about gun ownership. It's how do we prevent or put some realistic barriers and some realistic regulations in place that make it harder for potential mass shooters and, you know, clearly, notably, clinically insane people from getting guns, getting their hands on these, on these high-powered weapons. And my proposal is a licensing system similar to how we license cars. It is not a federal program. Every state has their own licensing program it, that, they, that they administer themselves, but they are required to do state licensing of motor vehicles. Different classes of motor vehicles have different licenses and different requirements. I think different types of guns should have similar regulations in terms or similar licensing uh, requirements. So you have, like, say, and, and that is just arbitrary. It doesn't have to be done this way, but say pistols versus rifles versus machine guns versus high caliber weapons, right? Versus, say, shotguns. I mean, you could have different classes for these things. Um, and, but I would leave it up to the gun uh, people who are well versed in how to do that to break down what the categories should be. And what the testing should be. There should be theoretical testing or, or, you know, written tests. And there should be practical testing. And there should be education. Like, you should have to go to classes in order to learn how to use guns. In the same way, 100% across the board in the United States, we have all agreed that vehicles, motor vehicles, should be regulated this way. None of us even question this, unless you're a sovereign citizen or some person who's on the economic down and out, and you can't afford to get a license or something. Those are usually the arguments behind why people don't want to comply with regulations to get a driver's license, right? Why do you have to do that? Because you're sitting behind, a, you know, a vehicle that is that weighs, you know, two or three tons, if not more, and is capable of mass murder. I mean, you you could actually do a whole lot of damage to structure and to people. It behind the wheel of a car or a truck if you don't know what you're doing. So it has been made part of our society that we regulate that freedom of movement, which is a human right. It's such a human right, it's not even, it's not even listed in the Bill of Rights. It's so basic. Uh, but it is a human right, the right to travel, the right to transport or to move around, 
Um, and we regulate that right, like we regulate all the rights that we have. You know, there aren't any rights we have that are not regulated in one fashion or another. So uh, my proposal is to regulate guns this way so as to kill two birds with one stone in that you kill the education component by having to educate the person on the gun before they're going to be able to, to have ownership of it and use it. And you um, are putting a filtering system in place that will catch out it, you know, visibly insane people or p suicidal people are being, will, put, will you put more of a time uh, wait period in there uh, where you're introducing, you know, any sort of break or barrier between them and, and their, their potential uh, act of suicide, and you make it a, a better chance of saving that person's life, actually. Uh, so it handles, it would help deal with some of that suicide uh, statistic. Um, but more importantly, it would let everybody else know that if you got a gun and you're walking around with it, we know if you're licensed to use it, that you actually do know how to use it. And I think that is uh, important. I think that's very important. So, uh, because you're dealing with a tool or an implement whose only purpose is to kill or cause great physical harm to another human being. That is why guns were invented. This is a non-controversial point. So, uh, so you better know how to use that thing and you better know how to secure it and you better know how to load it and unload it without hurting yourself or other people. And right now, there is no guarantee that you would be, that, that just because you can go buy a gun, that any of that would be true. And I think it should be true. And, um, and I think, you know, that gun activists and people who know about guns who are educated in them, and I know a few of them, would be behind this because, you know, you want people who, are, who, who know what they're doing with this. So that's my idea on it at this point. It doesn't take away rights. It, it restricts them based on, you know, like the same way that cars do. And that's really not a whole lot of a restriction at all at the end of the day. And it results in safer, you know, a safer situation. So um, that's my modest proposal.